One of the wonderful things about Ross King's book, Mad Enchantment, is the many layers that it has, the intensely personal portrayal of Monet himself and his, you know, tempestuous personality and his drive and the torment that he was living through. But also he paints that against a very, very detailed picture of the actual setting. Ross King must know his way around an archive like nobody's business. He brings the kind of details that you wouldn't even think of. But ma then manages to weave it all together in a way that, for me as a writer, I was in awe of. In a way that enables the reader to be there with Monet, to see and to feel what this artist was going through, through this incredibly, you know, late rush of creativity in his life. It's not that the techniques are different than what other writers use. It's really that he does it so well. Monet's arrival in Giverny had not been particularly auspicious. In, in April, April 1883, 1883, the very month that he moved into the village, a reviewer claimed that his work was simply beyond the comprehension of the general public. Monet enjoyed the esteem of a small band of admirers, the critic admitted, but the public at large still held out stubbornly against him. Monet paints in a strange language, he claimed, whose secrets, together with a few initiates, he alone possesses. 